Well, if you're harmless, you're not virtuous. You're just harmless. You're like a rabbit. A rabbit isn't virtuous. It just, just can't do anything except get eaten. It's not virtuous. If you're a monster and you don't act monstrously, then you're virtuous. But you also have to be a monster. Well, you see this all the time. Harry Potter's like that too. It's like he's, he's flawed, he's hurt, he's got evil in him. He can talk to snakes, man. He breaks rules all the time. All the time. He's not at obedient at all. But, you know, he has a good reason for breaking the rules. And, it, and if he couldn't break the rules, him and his little clique of rule-breaking, you know, troublemakers, if they didn't break the rules, they wouldn't attain the highest goal. So it's very peculiar, but it's, it's very, very, it's a very, 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 very common mythological notion. You know, the hero has to be... The hero has to be a monster. But a controlled monster. Batman is like that. You know? I mean, it's, it's everywhere. It's, it's, it's the story you always hear. One question is, you know, you're kind of implicitly moral insofar as you're socialized. But that's sort of procedural, it's just built into you. This is different, this is also becoming conscious of it. And expanding out your personality into dimensions that it wouldn't normally occupy. So, this happens to people all the time. So, for example, lots of my clients, my clinical clients, are too agreeable. And um, they're generally women, because women are more agreeable than men. But not always, because I've had agreeable men as clients as well. And what happens is, they, they're resentful and and they don't know how to stand up for themselves, and it's because they're very compassionate by nature, and so if you're entering into a negotiation with them, they'll let you win. Well, that's not so good, because, you know, you need to win too. Especially if you're in an organization of adults, where there's, there's a struggle, right? When you have kids, you can let them win, especially infants. Like, you have to let them win, and that's partly why compassion is so necessary. But as a as a basis for negotiation between adults, it's like, sorry, it's, it's insufficient. You have, to, you have to be a bit of a monster so that you can say no. And so a lot of what you do in, in psychotherapy is treat people's anxiety and depression. That's a huge chunk of it. Help them straighten out the way they think. That's a huge chunk of it. But another chunk of it is, well, let's toughen you up. You know, let's put you in a position where you can bargain. Let's teach you how to assert yourself and stand up for yourself. And that's assertiveness training. It's a huge chunk of psychotherapy, and you need to you need to learn it. It's like because part of how you regulate your interactions with other people is to negotiate. And you cannot negotiate unless you can say no. You can't do it, and it causes conflict to say no. And if you don't like conflict, which is basically the definition of being agreeable, then you can't tolerate the conflict. And so then you can't negotiate on your own behalf, and so then you keep losing and you're bullied. It's not good, and you get resentful, and it's really not good. So you have to develop your inner monster a little bit. And, and then that makes you a better person, not a worse person. You can, it isn't so straightforward to determine what our place is in the, in the world. And the thing that really got me with regards to that wasn't the good that we can do, but the harm that we can do. Because you can debate about the good we can do, but you cannot debate about the harm we can do. That's done. We know, if we want to know. And I think my experience was when I took that seriously, which meant understanding how that was about me, you know, about that Auschwitz was about me, and that the Stalinist camps were about me, then well, that reorients you. That's a deep part of the shadow idea, right? I mean, and I think that is part of the idea of taking the sins of the world onto yourself. It's like you're a human being, so you see what human beings do, that's you. And you might say, well, I'd never do that. It's like, don't be so sure about that. In fact, you're, the probability that you're wrong is extraordinarily high. It isn't self-evident that the default position is heroism in the face of the advance of evil. In fact, quite the contrary. So it's highly probable that you would be on the side of the weak who are transformed into oppressors. And that's a very terrifying realization if you, if you take it seriously.
which you should, and I do believe, that we, if we don't take that with sufficient seriousness, we are not going to survive because we're too powerful to be naive. You know, and that was something that Jung insisted on, especially after the invention of the hydrogen bomb in particular. It's like, if you're going to play with fire, you better be a master of fire. <laughs>